Let's face it, in our culture, menopause gets a really bad rap. And unfortunately, a lot of that has to do with a lack of education. Join me this week as we take a deeper look at what's actually happening during menopause and that the Eastern concept of coming into second spring is actually a really beautiful thing and menopause and aging is not a thing to be feared. Hi, I'm Adrienne Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your menstrual health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function, and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are. I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I am your hostess, Adrian Irizarry. And today we're going to be talking about menopause. Some of you listening, you're not quite to this stage yet, but hold this information and flag this episode for when you get closer to that transition. But I thought that it would be really important to talk about menopause because I have heard a common complaint from a lot of the women that I work with that are either on the early stages of this transition or they're in the process of transitioning, that they really have had a very hard time finding information about what is going on in their body and what it is that they can do about it. So here we are. We're talking about menopause. So I hope that this is a helpful resource for you. Menopause is a natural and transformative process in a woman's life that involves change on many levels, but is also often accompanied by discomfort. So If you didn't join us for the last episode, I would highly recommend reaching out and checking that out, um, flagging it to listen to, because we talked about the perimenopausal transition and some of the things that you can expect during that time frame. And sometimes I find that as people are talking about this, there's a little bit less clarity around what is perimenopause where does the menopause transition begin, and so on and so forth. So these two episodes go together really well because it is a process that you're going through over a stretch of time. But the technical definition of menopause is that you have been 12 months with no period. Okay, 12 months with no period. Now, as you're going through the transition, you will see, you know, your cycle will start to elongate and then you'll go for a few months with no period and then you'll have one. And then you'll go a little bit longer, maybe four to six months, and then you'll have one. They tend to get progressively lighter as well if all things are being held constant anyway, but you have officially crossed the menopausal threshold when you have been 12 months with no period. So during this transition, about 80% of women experience hot flashes during some stage of this transition, which are triggered by low estrogen levels. So when you look at the allopathic model and you go into your doctor and you say, hey, I am really struggling with heat. This isn't working for me. I feel yucky. Their solution for this is hormone replacement therapy. Because hormone replacement therapy will ease symptoms like hot flashes. However, with this solution comes an increased risk for things like breast cancer. So some women weigh the pros and cons and they decide that their symptoms are severe enough that they are really, really miserable and they will turn towards things like hormone replacement therapy. But others are more concerned with the breast cancer risks but they're miserable and they feel really stuck because they're not sure what they can do about their symptoms and the severity of their symptoms. So this is one of the reasons why I love working in East Asian medicine because 
this way of moving through the world and practicing support of the body has been supporting transitioning bodies for thousands of years without side effects. So some of this is going to sound like Greek and that's totally fine, but I thought that it would be helpful to kind of explain where some of these symptoms come from. And I am going to be speaking in East Asian or for the purposes of this conversation, traditional Chinese medicine terms. Okay. So menopausal imbalances fall into a couple of categories, kidney and or liver yin deficiency. Okay. So it's a yin deficiency or kidney yang deficiency. So more typical presentation of symptoms during menopause are things that fall in the yin deficiency category. Because these are where those stereotypical symptoms where, you know, there's tons of memes about having Gladys lay down on the front steps because her latest hot flash is melting the ice on the front steps. Okay, this is actually a cartoon that I posted in my feed a little while back. So if you want to check out my Instagram at Moon Essence Me, you'll find it in there. But we make jokes about these kinds of hot flashes, or as one of my clients called it, power surges. But hot flashes are one of the more common symptoms that you will see when there is a yin deficiency. But you'll also see things like waking often at night or getting very light sleep or disturbed sleep, meaning that you wake up a lot as people are transitioning. We'll also start to see disruption between three and four o'clock in the morning. Irritability is a big one. Liver cheese stagnation, we tend to be more sensitive to how stress affects the body as we're going through this transition because just like teenagers, when their hormones are transitioning and they are starting to come into their bleeding years, we are coming out of our bleeding years and our hormones are transitioning again. And so when we're in this transition, our body is doing a lot of things and we become a lot more sensitive to how stress affects our system. So irritability is definitely something that we see. Mood swings, dry eyes are a very common complaint among my clients as well as irregular periods. So when we think about menopause and all of the symptoms that we typically discuss with menopause, they're going to fall in this kidney yin or liver yin or combination of the two deficiency category. There is, however, a small percentage of women who have kidney yang deficiency symptoms. And those folks, even though it's a smaller percentage, I wanted to put this list out there so that if you were in this transition zone and you're listening to this and you're going, hold on a second, I'm not having the same kinds of symptoms that you just outlined. It's probably because you find yourself in that kidney yang deficiency category and you'll see symptoms like low back soreness, incontinence water retention, fatigue, indigestion, and weight gain. Those are things that are more common with a kidney yang deficiency. And I want to highlight those because, you know, just because you're going through menopause doesn't mean that you're going to have all of the same symptoms as your girlfriend does. So I want to normalize this conversation because essentially what is stepping forward is a kidney deficiency, whether it's a kidney yin or a kidney yang. More typically, it's a kidney yin because the menopausal transition, you are going through a drying of the sea of blood, right? This is why you don't menstruate anymore. And it leads to yin. Yin is substance. Remember from previous episodes, we talked about yin being substance. So this could be fluids. This could be blood as one of those fluids. It has to do with substance. So when you're having less coolant in the car, it's very common for heat to express itself. So it's kind of like the coolant level being low in your car. I know this is a very biomechanical explanation, but the coolant level is low in your car and the indicator light comes on in the car. Okay. If you don't refill the coolant, all of a sudden you're going to end up with steam billowing out the hood. Okay. You have to refill the coolant. Otherwise, you're going to have symptoms of heat. Same thing happens in the body. So because kidney yang deficiency signs aren't quite as explosive, our culture doesn't tend to poke fun at them as much, and they're not highlighted as often. But I think it's important to know that people can have both of these or all three of these deficiency patterns that can 
create symptoms during this time frame. I don't expect you to understand all of that. I just wanted to create a container so that you can understand that there is a pattern going on in your body that is creating the symptoms that you're experiencing or a loved one is experiencing and that there is a way to create right relationship in the body so that those symptoms aren't quite as pronounced. Okay. So that's really the name of the game, particularly during this transition. It's about creating as harmonious a relationship as we possibly can in the body as we're going through this transition. So the time leading up to menopause is known as perimenopause. That's why we covered it in the previous episode but it can unfold for several months or up to a few years. On average, women will be in that transition period for about four years. So this is where I was talking about seven-year transitions. And you can see symptoms a couple years on either side. 49 is like the Chinese medicine benchmark for typically where that menopausal transition begins. But I've had clients that started their bleeding pattern changes around 53 right? So they actually started the menopausal transition around 49 and then started into the getting closer to 12 months with no period around 53. Or I've had people who are 46 who are starting to do that. And my anticipation would be that they would probably be more in that close to 12 months with no period by the time they're 49, right? So on average, women will be in this transition period for about four years. So that's just something that's good to keep in mind. As I've mentioned in previous episodes, how we spend our chi in our early years will have an impact on how this life stage transition will show up to some degree. All right. So how we spend our chi. Remember, we've talked about this in a few episodes and our lifestyle, our diet, our stress levels, our lack of self-care, it all comes back, folks. It will pay dividends, either positive or negative, depending on how you've been caring for yourself. And that's really, really important. So all of the imbalances that show up during this transition, like hot flashes, heavy irregular periods, cysts, fibroids, et cetera, all of those things are a result of lifestyle choices in previous years, how we've managed our stress, how well we have fed our bodies. Have we been giving our bodies the right things? You know, did we take that invitation at 35 and start to change the way that we're moving through our world so that by the time we get to this transition, we are not so depleted that those deficiency signs end up being really severe? So I say all of that. As you know, so hopefully that people that are listening that aren't quite close to that transition yet realize that there is a huge opportunity and an invitation for them to be a proactive participant in whether this transition is going to be a more symptomatic one for you or not. But please, 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 if you are at that point right now and you're starting to go through that and you're listening and you're thinking, oh God, Adrian. I'm done for. Like, I have been really stressed. I haven't taken care of myself well enough. This is why I feel like I do. And I guess I'm screwed. No, you're not. You're not stuck. Okay. So don't feel like you're at the point of no return. If you're in this transition stage and you know you haven't been as gentle on your body as you needed to be in the earlier stages, what this does, however, is show you that this is a wake up call, is what it's offering you is this reduction in symptoms really does require mindful changes and commitment to yourself, to your lifestyle, holding boundaries around caring for yourself first. Put your own mask on before you put a mask on others. And if you can start to do that, right? I know that was totally an airplane analogy, but it's true. If you can start to put your mask on first and then support others, you are going to find you're going to be able to show up for your life better. You're going to feel better. Your severity of symptoms is going to decrease. Okay. So you're not past the point of no return. 
And remember, menopause is that third golden opportunity in your life to change the way your body shows up. So if you've missed the previous two opportunities because of circumstances and all of these types of things, here's your moment. Here is your moment that will literally change the way that you age and the way that your body shows up for the rest of your life. This is a really important one. So put your mask on first. There are social changes that happen during this time frame and kind of herald this change happening in the body as well. This is where you start turning outward. You want to go on girls trips. You want to pursue the career that you put on hold because of family or the degree that you didn't finish because you got pregnant or maybe you want to change your career entirely. You've had enough life experience that you find that different things are making your heart sing and you want to contribute to the world in a different way. There's this natural turning outward that happens during this time frame because you're no longer putting your chi into the creation of life. You are literally starting life anew in a different way. So I invite you with this episode, I invite you to dream a little and to think about what your life should be, what you want it to be, how you want to feel. Because menopause is that third golden opportunity. You are literally starting your life over in a lot of ways. Your health is going to be different. Moving through the world as a non-bleeding body is going to be different. Your energy is going to be different. The way you feel about your life is different. There is a reason that Chinese medicine calls this transition coming into second spring. I invite you to consider what is going to burst forth for you. What is going to blossom? What is going to bloom? And what do you want out of this phase of your life? And if you're interested in more information about how to care for your body during this phase and any other phase of your life, please join us in the Body Wisdom Membership Group. This is a dynamic conversation where some of the guests that have been on this program are going to be making a comeback and they're going to be giving us some in-depth conversations. There'll be lifestyle considerations, recipes food suggestions, and so much more in there. So in the show notes, there's a link for Body Wisdom. Join us in that group and part of that dynamic conversation in sisterhood because this is where it all begins. We support one another in our growth and transformation. And as we make these changes and our journey begins to change in these different transitional stages all throughout our lives. And I can't wait to see you there. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist, herbalist, sound healer, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizari of Moon Essence, LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment with Adrian for one-on-one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation. Like us and follow Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.